right, today we're going to be discussing on if you should disable hyper-threading on your Mac. That's right. In case you don't know, four new exploits on Intel CPUs since 2002 have been discovered. And the only way to seriously protect yourself is to disable hyper-threading. Apple have said that this can slow down your Mac by up to 40%. So I figured, my friends, I'm going to actually test the performance impact and let you know if you should do it. Security is important, performance, all that kind of stuff. So I've actually been using this Mac with hyper-threading turned off for the last 24 hours. And to be honest, I haven't noticed any performance slowdowns. That's the short of it. And I've actually noticed better battery life. But my friends, I've got some performance tests for you. And I've ranged it from Final Cut Pro video editing, Cinebench, Geekbench for you benchmarkers out there. And for the programmers, I've got Xcode compilation results. And for my tests, I've ran them in two different ways. One with full load, which I've had Final Cut open, I've had Cinebench open, I've had iOS Simulator open, and I've had a plethora of tabs open at the same time. Just see how many you can count over there. The system is fully loaded. So this is where hyper-threading should help out. More threads, more processing, more efficiency. So on the left is hyper-threading turned on, and on the right is hyper-threading turned off. Playback at 2x speed, they ran exactly the same. All right, let's jump into exporting speeds. So here I am exporting the clip. And funnily enough, the test with hyper-threading turned off completed it, this export, in 1 minute and 57 seconds. And with hyper-threading turned on, it took 4 seconds slower. Now, if you're thinking maybe this is because I had OBS running and all that kind of stuff in the background, you're correct. Because with hyper-threading turned on naturally, the export took 1 minute and 47 seconds. However, with hyper-threading turned off, it took 1 minute and 48 seconds. No difference whatsoever in Final Cut Pro, so don't worry about that. Geekbench, now you guys, you benchmarkers out there. With hyper-threading turned on, I was getting single core speeds of 5,120. With hyper-threading turned off, it actually went up higher. I'm getting 5,162. Multi-core score, however, went down from 22,367 to 22,144. So there is a slight increase in single core and a slight decrease in multi-core. Another test, Xcode, compiling an app to launch an iOS simulator over here with hyper-threading turned on, that took 13 seconds. With hyper-threading turned off, that took 14 seconds. So there is a difference. It was one second, one second, that's around 7% slower. Of course, it depends on the size of the app and all that kind of stuff going on. The biggest difference I notice in performance is Cinebench. So first up, with the load where I had lots of apps running in the background, OBS recording, with hyper-threading turned on, that reported a CPU score of 646. And with hyper-threading turned off, that reported a CPU score of 610. So 646 divided by 610, that's a 5% difference. However, when I just had Cinebench open and no other apps open in the background, I got a score of 975 with hyper-threading turned on, and I got a lower score by 25%. With hyper-threading turned off, I only got 772. So there you have it. When it comes to video editing, no difference. When it comes to coding, very slight 5% difference. And when it comes to the Geekbench, single claw was faster, multi core was slower. Whereas application like Cinebench, where it does intensive multi-core operations with reusable memory, that's where you lose 25%. However, I didn't notice that 40% that Apple were touting. So I gotta say, so far, hyper-threading turned off seems not that bad. But what gets even better is when you look into the memory implications. So I'm gonna go into power results. So on the left is hyper-threading turned on, and on the right is hyper-threading turned off. And I didn't notice much difference when I'm looking into it at the moment. But where I did notice the difference is power usage. So when I did that CPU compilation, it shot up to 46.67 with hyper-threading turned on. However, when I had hyper-threading off, it only shot up to 45.3 watts usage. Now zooming into this a little bit more, you can see that with hyper-threading turned on, it is using extra chunks of power over here. So you can see that hyper-threading turned off, that chart over there when it was doing Final Cut Pro, when it was doing Simbench, is very low. However, over here, it's slightly higher. And when it's executing that compilation, over here it shoots up to 45, whereas here it shoots up to 46. And I actually have noticed that battery life on my Mac has improved. I haven't done a full one hour test and all that stuff yet. However, it looks like with hyper-threading turned off, you do get slightly, ever slightly, a couple of percent better battery life.
All right, so that was pretty interesting results. Of course, I'm using a 2018 MacBook Pro with the i7 2.2, so maybe your results may vary. I'd love to hear how it performs on your Macs, but now I'm gonna show you how to disable hyperthreading the easy way and the slightly more trickier way on your Mac yourselves. So there's two ways of doing it. The first way of doing it, I'm gonna show you using an app called Xcode. So Xcode is a free app. You can get it from the App Store. Just type in Xcode over here and you can just download it for free. And with Xcode, you get an app called Instruments. And with Instruments, if you go into Preferences and untick Hardware Multi-Threading, it will actually disable the multi-threading approach and you can test out your Mac, see how slow it gets, how fast it gets, all that kind of stuff, and let me know how it works out. However, the best thing about these exploits is Apple have actually allowed you to disable hyper-threading on startup. So if you follow their guide, Now don't worry, this is completely reversible because if you just reset your PRAM, Alt, Command, P and R, hyper-threading will be re-enabled and your Mac will be back to normal. I'm very happy with this because I like the idea of having a more secure Mac, but now what I want to talk about is what hyper-threading is. So in the past when hyper-threading first came out, it was a bit of a debate on whether it's actually useful or just a marketing gimmick. Over the years, people have said, you know what, it does give you up to 30% better performance on certain use cases. Although other people have also said that, check this one out, I'm gonna quote SQL Enterprise. They've said that hyperthreading can be useful in an SQL environment if the workload is comprised solely of extremely lightweight transactions, if you need really lots of small tasks. However, in most SQL environments, hyperthreading will most likely degrade performance. And I've read lots of mixed reviews on whether hyper-threading improves performance or actually makes your computer slower. What I do know is that it does increase power consumption. So what I want to talk about now is give a shout out to the researchers who found these four new exploits and talk to you a bit about them. So there's one called Rogue In-Flight Data Load, and these are two exploits, and the other one's called Fallout. And that one's actually shout out to University of Adelaide, what's up, Australia. What's interesting is they've actually said that Intel's newest processors have actually made it easier to run these exploits because their fixes for their last exploit exposed more exploits. So there you have it. Intel is having some issues fixing these bugs. And if you jump into Intel's solution, scroll down a little bit, they pretty much say there's two ways to solve this problem. One, they've said, hey, it's not that big of a deal. The operating system needs to better manage their thread allocation. So only put two trusted applications on the same core at one time. And this sounds like a good deal. And they've also admitted right at the bottom that another method to do it, or basically you can follow this big long method of jibber jabbering, all that stuff, or another way to do it is just to disable hyper threading through the BIOS. And thankfully, that's what you're able to do now thanks to the latest Mac OS, which is 10.14.5. Previously, you weren't able to do that. Now, if you wanna know if your processor is affected, Intel have published a list and pretty much every single processor to date is affected. My one is the 069EH, and it's the seventh, eighth generation Intel Core processors. And there you have it. Yes, 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 that means it's all affected. Some newer eighth and ninth generation processors have fixed one little part, but the other two are affected. And some eighth generation processors aren't affected whatsoever. And these are probably the processors that don't have hyper-threading inside. However, you can use this app called Mac CPU ID, and it's an official app from Intel. You can search it on Google or download it yourself, and that'll tell you the exact processor you've got. So over here, I'm using 9EH, 9EH, and my stepping is 10, which means it's less than B. C, B is 11, C is 12, and D is 13. Now, I wanna go back into the research papers because they're actually pretty fun. And uh, they've got the best logos ever, lot zombie load, all that kind of stuff, and Fallout. And the best thing about Fallout is they've named their exploit Right Transit Forwarding, which stands for WTF. What the? <laughs> so they're having fun with it. And they've also published an interactive demonstration to show how the exploit works. So the way Threads works is every single core supposedly runs one operation at a time. 
So in this computer, I've got six cores. So that means I've got six operations that can run all at the same time. However, with hyper-threading, what it does is it shares some of that core's memory with other applications. So what that means is whenever you switch an application who's running on the same core, it switches a lot faster because it doesn't need to get the memory into the cache and then continue working. So the problem with hyper-threading is there's no security on no serious security around the cache inside the memory. So when an application takes over that core, it's still able to see all the memory that's being used, the cache that's being used by the previous application. Over here, you've got interactive chart, and they've said in the reorder buffer, ROB, that tracks the orig original transaction order, such as instructions can be scheduled out of order. And then you've got the store and forward buffers, and this is exploited by MSBDS. So when performing store operations, the CPU writes temporary data into store buffers. This allows the CPU to continue executing instructions before writing data to the cache. So this shows that it's sometimes speculatively forwarded and faulting instructions, allowing an attacker to leak stale data. You've got line fill buffers. That's exploited at MFBDS. Allows an attacker to leak the data if it's through speculative execution. And the load buffers have been attacked over here. And the memory, um, memory controller has got an attack. And its speculative task can leak uncached non-temporal memory requests. These researchers have proven that these attacks work on the web. So traditionally, you need to download an application, install an application, then potential viruses and all that kind of stuff can, can damage your computer. Whereas before the fixes on the web, other applications, other websites running in the background, for example, I'm not going to say Facebook, but people like that, if they wanted to, they can slowly mine your data and figure out your passwords, all that kind of stuff. Officially, it takes around 24 hours to get something useful. You might get lucky and get something earlier. But on the web, if you have a, a website open, Reddit, all that kind of stuff, you're in danger. However, the good thing about these fixes is um, all Apple have done with the latest version of macOS is disabled JavaScript hyper-threading in Safari and Chrome's latest update, they've also disabled hyper-threading. Is your computer running slower? Let me know. But you're a lot safer. Of course, you're still open to other applications, plugins, that kind of stuff. I'm a developer, so I use a lot of uh, unofficial applications. So I personally have disabled it and I like my computer running better anyway. But that's kind of like the way the cookie is crumbling. All right, I hope you found this video useful and it helps make your Mac more secure, powerful, better, faster, stronger, all that kind of good stuff. All right, give me some coffee, please. Thank you very much. Uh, let me know how it works out for your Mac. All right, today we're gonna to be talking about on if you should disable hyper-threading on your Mac. Now, if you don't know what hyper-threading is, hyper-threading, threading, thread, 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 threading. I can't say hyper-threading. Just say it how you know. Hyper-threading. Struggling with that word. <laughs> now, in case you don't know, hyper-threading. I can't say that word. I can't say that word. <laughs> hyper-threading. All right, I can't, I can't pronounce my THs. I'm learning, I'm trying really hard. Th.